Hen and Queasy won the EU FNCS Grand Final this weekend, with a crazy solo clutch from Hen to not only win the last game but the whole tournament. You probably also know that Kiriachi and Stormy Rank came second and Thomas and Tayson were third, but in this video I'm going to be uncovering all the interesting stats that never normally see the light of day. But first, let's have a look at the zones. Here's a map of where the first zone of each game was. There was not a single first zone that pulled east. Now I know that you're all going to say it's rigged, but let's concentrate on what it meant for the players. The four teams at Droneses were not only contested, but did not get a single first zone. But don't use that as too much of an excuse, because Hen and Queasy dropped North Sleepy, and they were only in zone three times. Although to be fair, several more were quite nearby. And here's a map of where the fourth zone of each game was. You will of course see a similar pattern to the first zones, where the southeast teams appear to have unfortunately been forgotten by the zone gods. Now let's look at some elimination and damage stats. Leading the elimination count was Hen with 32. His duo Queasy only had 10, but given the different roles that they have within the team, with Queasy as the main tarper in Endgame, we shouldn't be too surprised by that. The surprise package of FNCS, however, was Clown and Grolls, and the former finished with the second most eliminations, 27 in total. A very impressive performance. Diox and Waffler finished mid-table in 22nd, but Diox actually had the third most eliminations of anybody. I checked down the bottom of the list and don't worry, everybody got at least one elimination. N was only second on total damage dealt though. On 7,741 damage was the deal, averaging a crazy 645 damage per game. Unsurprisingly, every player here finished in the top 20 of the final leaderboard. Moving on to damage taken, and this is an interesting stat because the actual worst players die too early in the games to be in this stat. These players are survivors through troubled times, getting through heals without actually dying. A lot of the names here finished mid-table, including the leader Bubak, who you must assume is not afraid to trade for Surge and is an expert at finding time to heal up. And now naturally we can combine damage dealt and damage taken to get a damage ratio. And the leader of this, Anas, and the second place, Stormy Right, both dealt more than twice the damage that they took, which is an incredible achievement in a grand final. We also have some mid-table players like Pablo, Teak, and Rifler here, who may have traded damage efficiently, but perhaps not traded enough. Now the most damaged by a player in a single game. Medeo wins his second category here with a huge 1,414 damage in game one, where they ended up in fourth place. Bad Sniper wasn't far behind with 1,300 in a game-winning performance, while Raisin somehow got 6 eliminations and over 1,200 damage while finishing the game in just 15th place. Later on I'm going to show you the breakdown by zone of who did the most damage, but for now let's switch our attention over to how stacked the games were. Here are the number of players alive when Storm Surge started doing damage. So it's not the number when the warning appeared, but the number that were alive when the damage started being dealt. There were only two exceptions to Storm Surge switching on. One was the first stage of the last game, when some teams are desperate for points or making one last switch to risk a bit, and the other was the second moving zone of game 11, which I don't really have an explanation for, but there you go. Overall, there was an average of 12 players being hit by the first Surge, and 8 players in the second and third stages of Surge. This next stat is not a good one, especially if you are playing the finals. We know that games can get laggy in the final, well, it turns out that Epic are tracking it carefully, and I got hold of the time logs where they define the server as stable, low instability, or high instability. I'm not sure whether instability is a real word, I think instability would be a better one, but there you go, that's what they use. Here is my summary, broken down by zones. The data itself is stored a little bit confusingly, but I've done what I can here, so I hope that it's somewhat accurate. It's not a pretty picture, and you can see why they need Storm Surge through mid-game to stop the server from totally collapsing. Well this is a fun one, where we can see how the meta is looking at the very top of the game. And much to the delight of everyone, the SMG dominates with 431 eliminations, which isn't far away from rifles and shotguns combined. At the bottom we see how irrelevant the sniper has become with just one kill across the entire 12 games. And of course, we must mention the classic glitching under the map that contributed two kills to our finals experience. As mentioned earlier, we're going to revisit damage, this time breaking it down by zone. Here are the leaders in total damage dealt during each zone. You can see that Venno led the way in zone one, courtesy of all the times that Joe and him fought Seti and Chapix in South Sleepy. In second zone, it's Teak, with the tags from his mid-game, mid-map surge bases that he's becoming more and more well known for. 
Clearly in the later zones it will be full of players who ended high on the leaderboard as they are alive more often then. And we see a representative from each of the top three teams there, with Hen, Tayson and Stormy Wright all appearing. Benno also impressively manages to make a reappearance there. And one last stat, we're going to take a look at the winners, Hen and Queasy, their breakdown per zone. We already saw that Hen had quite a lot more damage and eliminations than Queasy, and here you see that it was true in every single zone. But again, I repeat from before that Queasy is the IGL and Tarpa, so this is not surprising, and does not mean that Queasy is being carried or anything like that. Queasy complements Hen perfectly in other less visible ways, and that is why they have been so successful this season together. Well that's it for stats for today. I'd like to thank Nocken for helping me out with the data for this video. He runs a site called fortnitereplay.info. The link is down in the description, so go check it out if you fancy seeing some more Fortnite data and visualizations. Otherwise, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and see you next time.